Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to episode, I think, it's, wait, I just wrote this. It's like 117 of Dev Chatter. Welcome. It is a nice Saturday afternoon and we are ready for some pair programming. Uh, while he is a static image, you guys may have noticed up in the corner there is another human being. Uh, that is uh, Michael Eaton. And uh, he is someone that I've known for a bunch of years. Um, and rather than intro him, I will let him tell you a little bit about himself. Yeah, uh, yes, again, sorry, we tried to get my video working, but who knows, man, Windows is just being flaky. Uh, so I've been a developer for probably 25 years, mostly in the Microsoft world, was an MVP for a few years uh, until I went to a company that's known for places, a place where MVPs go to die. Um, so I'm hoping actually uh, to get back in the community a little bit more and, and maybe see it again at some point. Um, I haven't coded... In a couple of years, I've been in a non-coding role, uh, and I already told Brendan I'm a little worried about that piece of it, but <laughs> he assures me I'm fine. And uh, yeah, I, I love to read. Um, I, I just finished book 49 for the year, so I'm kind of blowing my goals away and, and hopefully get some more in, and, and I'm looking forward to this. So that's enough about me. Sounds good. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, as he mentioned, uh, he, he's been out of a developer role, as in like he's been leading a team of developers for a period of time. I want to clarify that for all of you. Uh, so it's not like he avoided code. Uh, well, you, you did like code reviews all the time, right? I yeah. did. So, yeah, so the, the big sort of thing the is I, yeah, the big thing is I stayed out of the critical path. So I did write some code, but I wasn't doing anything, you know, I, I would do a little bit here and there, like low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, a lot of times I would start tasks and then have to hand them off. So um, I, I wasn't doing it as much as I wanted to. Yep. I, I have lived in that world as well where um, the only time... So uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this on stream before, but one of the jobs that I had, I had a similar problem to that. I was um, I was stuck in, in a leadership spot where the only time I got to code was with, if I was pairing with someone else. So I was never, like, working on something. And I, I don't know if you ever got to do that at all. Like... Pairing's nice. Yeah, no, I did. So we had, um, so my team was made up of all seniors but one, right? So I, it was an unusual team. Most teams uh, there didn't have, I mean, some teams had one senior, some teams had none. And mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to have seven. Uh, and then I had, there was a, a kid we hired. He was an intern for uh, a while, and then we hired him on. And right there, especially at the end uh, of my time at this last gig, uh, I was pairing with him a lot. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, you know, mainly for my benefit, mainly for my benefit, because it's like, I want to write some code, dude. You have to pair with me. So, <laughs> yes, exactly. That, I did that same kind of thing. You sit down and code with someone because you want, because you want to get to code and you otherwise don't get to. Uh, so I will say that, um, you actually had a pretty crazy team. Like when, so I actually <clears> didn't know who was on it until recently when you like tweeted about you know hey i'm moving on to this new thing i love my old team and you tweet this name list of people and i'm like i know like all of your team they're amazing that is one epic team that you've got there it's really a crazy group so, yeah it was a, definitely a dream team i mean it was i i the the one the hardest part about leaving that job was leaving that team behind um but you know we all we're all friends so we all keep in touch and it's only been a couple of weeks and you know, so far they, they haven't found anything that I did while I was there that they've said, oh my God, we hate you now. So that's, well, that's a good, good thing. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so obviously when I invited you on here, I figured we would probably do some kind of uh, coding on something interesting. Um, I was figuring that probably one of the easier ones to do would be we do a kata today. <clears throat> so uh, I pulled up the kata catalog that I usually reference. This one's Steve's. Uh, I'm sure you can tell, uh, well, actually, you can't see my screen right now, uh, but I guess you could if you're looking at the stream. The yep. kata that I was planning on doing is called the Potter Kata, and I can't remember if I did this. I don't think I've done this one on the stream before, which is why I was going to suggest we do this one. Um, so at that point, I haven't done this kata in years at least. Um, this is not one of the ones that I that I pull out and do um, with groups of people all that frequently. So like when I do workshops and things like that, I'll usually pull out a kata 
and have them work on one of them, right? I really like that concept. So I figured, why not do the Potter one? Have you done this one? I have not, but it looks interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, exactly, Echo Strike. We're going to do another kata today. So anyone that is out in the stream wants to, uh, you know, do their own version of this kata, feel free. I will post <laughs> a quick link into the chat of the one that we're working on. Um, so it's there. Okay, so, uh, Mike, click a cursor somewhere on the screen so everybody can see that you're in this code, too. So, there he is. He's got that cursor up there. I'm over here. So, let's read the kata. Uh, so our instructions. Imagine a bookstore that is selling the seven books from the Harry Potter series. Each book has a standard price of $8. Okay, so any given book, $8. Sounds like they're probably paperbacks. Uh, if you want to buy more than one of the series at a time, you get a discount, okay? And buying multiple copies of the same book does not earn a discount. Okay, so buying book number one, two, three, and four would get you a discount. Buying four copies of book one would not get you a discount. So they're trying to encourage you to buy the whole set, is the idea. Uh, so write a method that will calculate the optimal customer discount for any set of books. Okay, so we're trying to be nice, and no matter how the person... Uh, at the register, you know, keys in the books, no matter what, we always give whatever the best discount is for the customer. Uh, so keep in mind that larger percentages are not always better, uh, as can be seen in the example below, uh, in which case it is better to keep all the books at a 75% discount instead of having some at 70 and some at 85. Okay, uh, so the sample selection that there, that uh, is pointed out in this uh, kata is if you're buying one copy each of one and six and two copies of two through five it is actually cheaper I believe it is saying in this results analysis here which I won't make you all read to buy a copy of one through five and a, a set of one through five and a set of two through six than it is to buy one through six and two through five does that make sense to, mm -hmm. to you and everybody on stream cool uh, so interestingly, this is this is phrased as a set of books, right? You know, we're selling in a point of sale system. But what I love about the kata is that while we're solving it this way, um, this it's not exclusive to this uh, problem domain, like what we're trying to solve. Because when I think about this, I was this reminds me of the concept of like, uh, let's say Mike that we worked for a company that um, did like tax writing software, right? They might want you to build into the software, for example, hey, we want to make sure that, you know, when someone uses our tax software that, you know, if it's a married couple, for example, that we've checked whether they save more money by, uh, you know, being, you know, married filing jointly or married filing separately and all these other circumstances. So while we are just doing it for books, I think this concept actually applies in a lot of different code. So, cool. Uh, does that everything make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, let's get coding. Uh, first things first, we need a, we need a unit test project, which I will go ahead and add really quickly, because I don't think, I think it'll get wonky if you try, <laughs> being the, um, extra person, right? Mm -hmm. So, X unit test project, since we didn't name the other one, we're not going to name this one either. Uh, are you, are you familiar with X unit and N unit, or just N yep. unit? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, both, both. All right. Some people haven't used X unit. Uh, I just feel something. Like, Wait a minute. I could use N unit if you want. All right. Uh, so where do we want to start? I'll let you uh, start us with our first test. All right. Uh, I need to see the. I gotta let me rearrange my screen here so I can actually see the the kata on my oh, other yeah. screen. Sorry about that. If you have the stream up, I can put it back up on my screen. No, I, so I, I just go between tabs right now. That's fine. Cool. Um, well, I mean, would the simplest would the simplest first test be uh, just buying one book is no discount? I, sure. I don't know. Buy, buy a book is eight dollars. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Uh, do you want to write that first test, or do you want me to? Uh, let's let you start. All right, I will make the first test then. Let's rename this class to be uh, 
uh, well, what's the object we're dealing with here? There's, so it, this kata seems open and not telling us exactly what to do. So let's make um, calc price maybe. I think that's a, an appropriate abbreviation. So calc price should, uh, and I'm going to say return. And um, base price uh, given one book. Does that name? Yeah, that, that works. name makes sense. Yep. Good. We are in agreement. Let's make a new class. Uh, we'll call this. Um, I don't want to call it the the. It's almost like the register, or the checkout, or something. Um, Maybe we'll just do price calculator. Yeah, that, that works. New price calculator. Okay. Uh, oh, I want to put this. I was about to let it uh, just create one. It was going to put it in the wrong project. So we'll do price calculator over here. We'll add that reference. And price calculator which we then get mildly redundant, but calc price is what we called it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how do we want to do adding of... Um, how do we want to do adding of... Um, oh, this should be decimal. <laughs> Absolutely decimal brain work there. Do we want to send in the full list set of books, you think, to calc price? Or do we want to do, uh, like, adding to the calculator? And, there's, and I don't think there's a right answer here. <laughs> right. Which so do I, you prefer? Yeah, so I, I kind of went to uh, add them. You no, no, add don't them? Pat, yeah, I think okay. so. All right, let's, let's add them. Let, let's do that, and we can always refactor if it doesn't feel right. I mean, it, that's fine. All right, so we will do price add... And we'll say, uh, do we need a book class? I uh, think so. I'll make one. Yeah. Yeah, we... So we will create a book class. And I'm going to pass in the number one to the book class. Just so that we have some way of tracking which book it is. So C tour one uh, whoops int book number because uh, I'm just gonna do that in in lieu of a name for now because obviously in in the real world we'd have some kind of unique identifier for the book and know that we're just calculating the dis discount for you know the Potter collection right but obviously here that doesn't really matter actually I created a field I want a property. Yeah, I mean, in this case, we've got books one through seven, so which I assume you've yeah. read. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We just finished uh, rewatching all the movies last weekend. Oh, fun. So, yeah. Yeah, they're they're good books. I like them a lot. Uh, all right. So everything I think functions now, right? And it should run and fail. Um. Oh, uh, well, it's going to pass because I didn't assert, but it will it will run, which is good, because we got rid of all those problems. Uh, we'll do assert equal. We're expecting it to be 8, and it's going to be, whoops, I didn't save the price. Decimal price. Let's run those again. Now it should fail, and then I can pass it on to you. There we go. Uh, do you want to make this one pass then? Uh, I'm gonna anchor I can try. You. There yeah, we go. I can try. Sounds good. Uh, and if you didn't figure it out, um, in the top right hand corner of your screen, wait, are you in VS Code or Visual Studio? I'm in VS Code, and I'm kind of okay. wondering if I should switch over to Full Studio. Uh, it doesn't but. technically matter. You could use either one. Um, I was just going to, the, the instruction for where the icon is that you click on to anchor to me is in a different spot. So. Okay. I anchored to you, so I will watch wherever you go right now. Okay. 
All right, so uh, super clicky keyboard here, and I have Vim key binding, so you're gonna hear lots of clicking. Oh, that's not uh, a problem. As I, as I figure out where I'm going here. Okay, so uh, right now in here you did return zero. Um, we added a book. weird to be in code again um <laughs> well so the funny thing is i've been writing a book but i've been doing it in vs code so I, i'm used to being here but just not actually writing code it feels that's weird. that's a unique one yeah um all right so go with the easy thing just return eight. <laughs> oh yeah i guess yeah make me write the real code then <laughs> simplest thing that works yeah so uh, and I don't know from here how to how to run the tests. Oh, but, uh, uh, I can run them. Uh, I'm I'm not sure how you would run them there either. You could potentially do it command line, but that I don't know. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> good point. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's why I'm kind of that's why I'm kind of thinking I should switch over to full. Yeah, I don't know what it does with that. Anyway, so they they run and they pass. So cool. Uh, why don't you uh, make a test that will fail then and m make me actually do something? <laughs> okay. Jeez. No, 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 but that, that, no, that's how it works, right? Right, like, right, right, right. Your, your goal is to, make, is to make the other person have to write code, sort of. Uh, we had no so repeat there, right? There was nothing to refactor yet. <laughs> right. Uh, so let's see. Um, <laughs> so this should... What, we got comedians in the uh, chat? Uh, yeah, reading? someone was telling you that you should make a list of tea, because uh -oh. I absolutely love lists of teas. And, and, and he's not technically wrong. I do love lists. Right. They're great. All right. right. See, I, I told you guys on Twitter a couple weeks ago, I don't know how you can focus on the code and on the chat. Oh, yeah. And, and still talk. Uh, so <clears throat> let's do uh, given about two of book one. Sounds good. Oops. Which should still, yeah, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Yep. And, yep, that's what it should be. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, I will, so let me run these real fast just to confirm that that's definitely failing. Oh, wait, that's supposed to be 16. Oh, yeah. Now it should be failing. And I caught it before it went green, too. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So it yeah, definitely I fails. I don't know what happened here. Uh, one. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, no, that totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that might have been on my end. It messed that up. Okay. Um, I didn't want to open that. I wanted to open this. Okay, so when we add a book... Uh, all right, so we're going to cheat, huh? That works. I encourage you to cheat, so I will cheat as well. So so, we'll so real quick, it. so how do, I, how do I anchor to you if I want to see... Uh, is my name appear somewhere on the top of the bottom somewhere? Like a, a B or a, a something like that? Nope. You don't see that anywhere? It's not mm -hmm. down bottom right, maybe. I forget where it is in VS Code. Bottom. See, now you're gonna get me to open VS Code and look for where the sharing oh, stuff is. Oh, there we is. go. I got it. I got it. It okay. was in a in the side panel. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, I I think it should have been like somewhere. I don't know. I don't remember where they put it. Either way, once you click on so like I just click on on your name and it lets me anchor mm -hmm. to you. And then whenever I unclick it, I get to go. On my own thing. Okay, so that was setting it to 8. So that's a quick refactor. I'm going to run the test just to confirm that it still breaks the same way, which I know it does. Uh, but, hey, why not click the test? One test failing. Cool. Uh, and it's that one. So here's what I want to do. I want to say total 0 and total plus equals 8. When we add a book, we add $8 to the price. Boom. Simplest thing that works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let me... Uh, so, at this point, we got that green. We need a quick refactoring. So I'm going to get us a quick refactoring. Um, so let's change this from a fact to a theory. Because I should get this before we move on, because we definitely... Have this. So that's number of books, expected price... So base uh, should return base price 
given all same book. Same book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all same book. We'll just say that this is the simple test, right? And then let's change that to be 1 and 8, 2 and 16, and that is count book number, which is really confusing. But <laughs> so that's book number, and then we want to add it for whoops, I count. And then I do believe I get to give you a, uh, a fun one also. And whoops, that was not book number and count. That was um, expected. It's not an int, it's a decimal. And I think it'll let me get away with not writing the M there, but I'll put it in there just in case so we're clear about the fact that, oh, nope, it won't take it. Oh, that's weird. Okay. I'm confused by that. M should be required to tell it it's a decimal literal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see people saying stuff in chat, so maybe that means I messed something up. But let's find out. Uh, is that really? But yeah, okay, so we. <laughs> that was binary logic catching my mistake. Uh, And uh, welcome everybody. Hopefully you're all enjoying the stream. Uh, we have green, so that looks good. Um, let me do this one real quick while we're here. I uh, hope you don't mind. I'm going to do the zero, zero, 001. Okay. So we don't break that. I figure we can put zero in with the same with that set because it's you know <laughs> zero of them is zero. It's a special case of of not applying a discount. Okay, let me now get you that failing test. The one where there's... Act so, I got to do actual work on the test. Now you, I think, get to do actual work on the code. Okay. Uh, so, should give... Uh, should return... What's the discount? Uh, I need to pull the kata again, just so we can see what the instructions are. Yeah, if there's two books, two different titles, it's a 5% discount. Okay, so... Uh, I'm actually, so I'm not going to say what the discount is, but I am going to say that we're checking the two book discount. Okay. So the, the simplest discount. So let's say return um, uh, two book discount uh, given uh, different books. Uh, given, I'll say two different books. Two unique books. <clears throat> unique. There's a better word. Yeah, I like it. Much shorter than di different was such a long word. I didn't like. It. <laughs> this test day was getting too long. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna. Can you can you repost the link to the kata? Yeah, absolutely. Will. It is right there. Uh, <laughs> link to kata posted. Uh, and also, I, I see a chat, you know, you know, the plural site's amazing, and I, I definitely, if someone's especially new to programming and they, they want to get into it, uh, plural site's awesome. And make sure they watch the uh, pair programming uh, that Brendan and uh, Steve did. It was really good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I actually really did like our uh, pair programming um, course a lot. It was very fun. I'm watching. Uh, have you, I, I assume you've been out to the Plural Site Summit and stuff. And have you, have you met Nigel Poulton? Uh, so I've been to their summit twice. Uh, I uh, don't think I've met Nigel though. Okay, I'm, I'm watching one of his right now on Docker, and he is it's really, really entertaining. Like super engaging. Um, yeah, really good stuff. And uh, w welcome uh, everyone. Thanks for that uh, follow and the biddies there, Our Hawk. So now we need a 0.95. So the question is, do I want to hard code this 15.2 M in here, or do I want to do like the multiplication? So I could I could write that, or alternately I could do this. What's your What's your stance on this? If we do eight times two times 0 0.95. 
I would do it that way because I think that will help with future tests. At least it'll give us a, a good point for those future tests. Yeah. So we can do that. Then it should get us the right one. So if anyone is wondering why I'm writing the word the letter M after all of those, that forces uh, those literal numbers in C sharp to be considered a decimal number, and that means that it is not going to be a floating point. That's going to be actual like base 10 calculations of those numbers so there's no weirdness with multiplications uh, with decimal places which you want to do for money so let's try this it should say 16 it, it should it come back with 16 even though we're expecting something else yeah so 15.20 actual is 16 so no discount was applied uh, I'm gonna anchor to you and you're up. Tag. So we have to somehow know, uh, we have to keep track of the books, right? So right yep. now we're simply passing in that, hey, there's a book. Um, so it feels like we need to add the books in our ad. We need to add them to a list <clears throat> so we can kind of keep track of, of how many of, of any one are in there. That sound about right? Yeah. All right. Uh, geez. For for all you listening, this this is what imposter syndrome is right here, man. I just <laughs> y'all are gonna see me like ah he, yeah we we were right. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, so no, I, I will I will tell you as as someone that uh, does coding live streams on a regular basis, imposter syndrome is a real thing. I, I will come out here every day and be like, oh man, I'm gonna mess something up. People are just gonna be like, man, Brendan's an idiot. No, we totally do it all the time. Uh, <laughs> the other fun part is I'm in Visual Studio. He's in VS Code, so he doesn't get as much IntelliSense help. Right. Uh, make a make a field. So just go make a private list field for this. All right, that's where I was headed. But I want yeah. To get my... There we go. And I will get you your using statement up at the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's weird. So I actually see... Uh, okay. What I see in code is like a, a template. It's kind of weird. So it must be like a resharper template you have for your class. Oh, so I don't, yeah. So I don't actually see the fully... Like, I see what you just did uh -huh. when it comes to the namespace and everything. Um, I see lots of dollar signs and things interesting oh really yeah uh you shouldn't see those so well, something got wonky okay so yeah. uh cool thing for anybody that's wondering uh the tech that we're using that allows him to type in this same visual studio that i am in is called vs live share and the neat part about that is that like it works like you know google docs so, like multiple people editing at the same time really awesome however uh, it's still in an early preview and has some bugs, and it doesn't surprise me that it would have bugs related to uh, extensions in Visual Studio that I'm running. So not terribly surprising. Like actually, let me. Yeah, so that's so I just paste it in the uh -huh. chat. That's what I see. Oh well, that's fun. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it didn't pass it over right. Uh, oh, close and open that uh, file. Would be my guess. No, nope, same thing. Oh well, I don't know then. Uh, yeah, the method's fine though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Methods well, let's fine. just code the method then. <laughs> no. But it is, it is fascinating to see like what yeah. I see on my screen versus what's your, what's over in the stream, like in even in terms of spacing, right? So it's interesting. Uh, okay, so we need to instantiate this somewhere. What's the best place to do that? Just down here and just check it first, and if it's not, then then do it. Uh, I just instantiated it right in its spot because oh, yeah, it can okay. get created. Yeah. All right. And then cool. down right. there, yeah, I just added it right there because I didn't. We don't need to worry about it. Okay. So add the book to the set and calc the price in the other spot. I would say. I still don't know if that gets us what we. I guess it can. So right now the code should still work. Uh, we haven't changed anything. 
Like right. at, like this, everything still runs. Let me let me give the tests a run, and the only thing that should fail is that new one, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So we're all still good. As soon as you remove that total line, then we need to change how calc price works. Right. <sighs> okay. How how's your link? Probably pretty weak. All right, well, let's, well, let's do it anyway. Why not? Uh, yep. Instead of total, let's do underscore books. So return underscore books, and then let's uh, then say dot. Uh, what do you want to do? Sum. Uh, well, uh, oh, it's not the it's not a number. So sorry. Uh, select it and uh, sum it. Oh, hang on. Let me get you uh, a using statement. Since I can, using system.link. There we go. Uh, inside of that, select it as, as uh, the number 8. So just do like uh, equals and then fat arrow and then the number 8. X, X. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Then just put in the number 8. Got a 3. <laughs> and then sum it. There we go. Uh, so now let me run this again. And uh, run our tests. We now should have refactored to the point where we're calculating this based on these instead of... Yep, okay, so everything's passing. So we're now at the exact same point where we started. It's still just that one new test that is failing. So, cool. So now we need to find a way to apply a discount. Right? Mm -hmm. So... We have the sum. Maybe... Uh, multiply the sum by... Uh, so, like, up here where my cursor is. Okay. Uh, by, like, a method we'll call get discount or something. So just, like... Sure. We're, we're not handling the complicated case yet, right? We're just doing the right. simple one that we've we've coded for. Yeah, decimal, decimal, definitely, definitely. You were totally right. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, so now, how do we get the discount? It is. Um, why don't we say if you you know unique books return like if unique books equals two return like uh, zero point nine five or something. And we can get a, isn't there a unique, or am I thinking of something else? I, uh, thought, there was a, I thought there was a way to get, distinct. oh, is that what? Distinct. Yeah, I need it. It is, right? We want to do something like that? I think so. Uh, hang on. There we go. And then return back uh, 0 0.95. There we go. And then if it's not this, then return back 1, obviously. Right? Is my cursor on yours? Yeah. yeah. Sweet. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's run this. I think we're good. Now you see, I t <laughs> you had to you had to write one difficult thing. Oh dang it! What did we mess up? Hang on, we borked one of the other ones. Uh, expected sixteen, actual fifteen point two. Wait, what? Oh, distinct doesn't work. Uh, that's my bad. Uh, not quite because we needed to do this. Hang on. X dot book number. Select the distinct book numbers that they bought. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Yeah, that should make sense. Hey, Zoltra Lord, welcome. Uh, uh, let's see. He's Overland. Jensen, welcome, welcome, welcome. I see a bunch of people in the chat. Why does he look uh, look at the keyboard when he types? Uh, I was looking at the keyboard when I typed. I, uh, I will also say that I do look at my keyboard when I type a lot of times, even though I don't need to look at my keyboard. It's just kind of a habit. I've been doing it for years. 
Uh, Will Bennett, Dictionary. Ooh, good suggestion. Um, since we're only counting Harry Potter books, we might be able to get away with that uh, and get rid of the book concept entirely. Uh, distinct on the book object. Ah, yes, I think Binary Logic's figured out what we did there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, uh, and, and one person noticed uh, yep. the, the paren thing with the asterisks. <laughs> yeah, I'll yep. tell you what, you, you know, it, you can type perfectly until you have an audience and then it just goes oh, yeah. out the window and I, 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 now i'm going to pay attention to that now if i if i do that when i'm not having people watch but my my big issue is since i do use vim everywhere and i have vim plugins for studio and for code and for all the places i can uh is that i, I end up hitting like escape a lot right and so even if i don't need to uh, i'll hit escape um yep. to get out of insert mode and stuff so Everybody also notices all the time I hit, um, uh, I save all the time. I save and I build all the time. Mm. I constantly hit those keys. Okay, so uh, I'm going to run our test one last time. I cleared out the last remnants of the total that we were keeping track of before. All right, get me, uh, let's, let's, get a, uh, let's get another test. So we did the, well, we did the two book discount. Uh, and I think that worked. Um, why don't we do the three book discount? Okay. Well, I'm already seeing where <clears throat> I'm already seeing where I, I think at some point we're going to be able to really kind of simplify all of those, right? Since uh, since each of the percentages only goes up five percent, mm -hmm. I think we'll be able to to really simplify that at some point. But for this case, let's just um, let's. Uh, you think a switch here and just switch on that distinct count and then capture the three uh, or should I just do uh, else if that feels dirty? Uh, yeah, we right. can we can switch on the uh, on the count of books. Yeah. Well, let's let's do the let's do the dirty one first. Uh, right. Let's let's get the test first, man. Test first. Oh yeah, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. Look at that. See, this is what, this yeah. what happens when you, when you let a non-coder start to code. Okay, so here we go. No, a former coder. We, former we, coder, yeah, you're we right. We'll bring you back. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, given to unique. So. Should that, so that should fail, right? Uh, probably. Yeah. Once we do that. Ah, yeah, good, good catch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone asked, "Is this uh, this is the main guy from DevIQ, uh, Zoltra Lord? I am one of the main guys from DevIQ, um, uh, but not Mike. Uh, nope. No. Uh, the person whose uh, GitHub account this uh, Kata is from that's that's another DevIQ guy. So this fails." So thank you. I will go do do this. Uh, so we'll do the the crummy way to start. And actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna nuke these. Uh, if three, then that right. Mm -hmm. That look that look valid. I think that does. Mm -hmm. And then we'll obviously extract out the. The common variable. Ooh, dang it! No, oh. we messed something up. And by we, I mean I. <laughs> uh, what is this? Expected sixteen was fifteen. This was for base price given all the same book. Uh, when we did two, uh, did I give them a discount? I gave them a discount. What? I shouldn't have given them a discount. Book distinct count. Oh, hang on. How do uh, we must have undone that? 
Uh, we we must have clicked undo at some point. Mm -hmm. Yep, there we go. And we're better again. Fixed. Hooray! There we go. Now they're all green. Okay, uh, so the couple of things that you mentioned when you were looking at this. <laughs> the one thing being how absolutely ridiculous some of this looks. Uh, so... Uh, this, this particularly, this <laughs> doing that twice. <laughs> mm -hmm. I assume you're anchored to me. Yep. Uh, yep. Cool. All right. Uh, so that's uh, distinct. Distinct count. Whoops. Helps if you don't mess up that typo there. Okay. Uh, distinct count is that two, three. Cool. Um. Um. So those work. Uh, and we could totally switch that if you want. It doesn't really make a difference right now, so maybe we will. Uh, and then you did ah good, and you did one, two, and four. Nice. <coughs> Cle clever thinking. Just in case that's ever a problem. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of book four. Uh, absolutely, because that's. Uh... What's four? Is that Order of the Phoenix? No, four is uh, oh. Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire, okay. Yeah, I like four. You liked four? Yeah, uh, so, we, like, if we had our choice, like, we, like when we watch these things, right, we'll start from one, or when I read them, uh, I have to start from one, um, mm -hmm. and do them all, but, like, I think always a good starting point is three, like, Prisoner of Azkaban is awesome. So That's three, four, five, uh, um, the, the woman, uh, I can't think of her name now. The one in the pink in the movie, but uh, yep. super obnoxious. Um, it just drives me nuts. Um, yeah, yeah. She, would, she's supposed I would to skip that movie. Yeah, I'm right. I would skip that one every time if I could. But my wife, that's like one of her favorites. So. Oh, see, I, I, I'm not as big a fan of the movie. I agree with that, but I love that one's book. The Order of the Phoenix yeah, no, book is fantastic. Yeah, no, all the books were amazing. I loved all of them. And Umbridge, yes, uh, yeah. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Superland uh, got Dolores Umbridge. Yeah. Um, you know that because you're awesome. That's why you know that. Uh, right. Given four, uh, you know what? Before, so we're just going down through the discounts, and I want to get those at some point. Uh, let's let's do this real fast. Let's say um, uh, I want to change this. Let's give. Let's just say um, give uh, what something discount. Um, Give numbered discount given uh, one of each book. Oh yeah. I want to I want to do this test instead now. I, I just thought of, I just thought of, I'm like you know what we need to do this at some point because otherwise I'm just gonna end up with like seven different tests that are each like oh with one with two with three with you know. Right. Yep. Now I do like the idea of having this one separate, the the base price one. But then for the discounts, just to see that they applied, I think we can do one big test for that. Mm -hmm. So we'll do inline data and let's pass in um, the number and the expected discount. So we'll do uh, two books and the expected discount is zero point nine five, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's account. And decimal discount. Let me get myself a little bit more space here so I don't have to go on a new line there. And then for book, I'm going to do this, which, which again, my test is slightly less good than yours was because of the fact that I am going to lose um, the, the gap that you put here, going 1, 2, and 4. I'm not going to be able to do that because I'm writing it like this. And we'll start it at 1 and we'll go up to less than or equal to the count. Like this. And then our price calculator is going to be uh, times count. So $8 times the count times and then this is the discount. Whoop. Did this what? What? I am confused. 
I'm not sure if I typoed that or what, but, uh, okay, so this one, I replaced the one that was three, so I should actually probably start the test this way. And then merge in the other one. Um, uh, let's see. Yes, you can remove the select and put the selector inside the... Uh, oh, yes, yes, he's totally right. We can remove that. Uh, Striker, good suggestion. That was a really good suggestion. Uh, we can put the select inside of the distinct. I think. Uh, ooh, no, actually, is it actually going to... Ooh, no, it would, uh, it would distinct based on that, but we wouldn't end up with the eights that we're adding together. So uh, I don't think that we can do that. Oh, I said Dixo instead of Disco. Well, that explains it. Uh, do I know Bill Gates? No, I've never met Bill Gates. Um, I have not even seen Bill Gates in person. Uh, when I started going to Microsoft for stuff, it was Balmer that was the one that would show up and talk to us. Yeah, all the times I was out there for the summit, I saw him once. Yep. Uh, some I never saw did. him. Uh, yeah. Despite having been out for, you know, I've been out to geez, like seven, eight summits, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's get this other one in here. So we did that one. Uh, wait, that one? Yeah, uh, we did this one. So this test can go away because it's been replaced. And now this one is going to be 2 and 95, and it's going to replace that test right there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let us trust that we got that right. So, looks like the tests pass, so that's good. I like it. That's much cleaner. Cool. Uh, let me do one of these. Uh, four. So, we're going to pass this, and then we'll have you make these suddenly work. And then, if you want to do that switch, you are welcome to it. So, here is, uh, since I've got this open again, I'm going to post the link for anyone who is wondering. Um... That is, so, four, five, six, seven. Okay. There was one for each, right? Yeah, so, 15. So, five is the one that jumps by 10. Okay. So, that's eight, five, seven, five, 70, and 65. Confirm that those numbers look right. So, that's a 35% discount, 30%, 25, 15, 10, and 5. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Very important that we get those right. <laughs> if you test it, so like, now the, the, for anyone who doesn't know, the reason why I, I wanted to get these values into the inline data is if that ever changes, that is the simplest thing to change. So if, if later on someone comes along and they says, hey, we adjusted all the discounts, okay, cool. We can just adjust that in the test here. And because it's already extracted out, that could have come from data instead of being in line like that. So, okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to anchor to you, Mike. Okay. And we definitely get failures, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> yep, yeah. we've got some red. Four, four failing ones. Right. And I figure we can do that one as a set, right? All the people that are like, oh, yeah, one, one at a time is like, that wouldn't make sense to back and forth on those. Mm -hmm. I'm distracted looking at chat, seeing if there's anything interesting. <laughs> Uh, All right, so. <laughs> people, people did ask some interesting things. They were wondering if, if Balmer yells developers at us. And I've never heard, I was not there for that, and I have never heard him yell developers. I think he learned his lesson not to do that again because people noticed. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people sweat pretty profusely, especially when they're up on a stage. You'd be surprised how warm it gets to be on, like, when you're under those lights, it's crazy. Yep. So I, I never fault anybody that's up on a stage sweating. Like, I get it. <laughs> like, it's warm. You're usually active. Uh, well, you uh, see that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, did you want to try the switch? I can. Yeah. Uh, if you need me to put in a quick little template, I can. Oh, yeah, that works. Oh. Yeah, you can also just type it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Again, it's one of those things where I, I'm muscle memory isn't. So I just reinstalled and. Full Visual Studio, I just installed ReSharper, which I haven't had uh, in years. And so I'm trying to get back to that. 
Um, okay. Uh, and then I'm, I'm just going to put these in because I can. And now you have a template because yep. and I will nuke that. There you go. Okay. Uh, and I think I left out the, the three. But Visual Studio is a little bit nicer to me about this stuff. Right. Okay. And it's basically we just need to do this for all of them, right? Four, five... Uh, Will Bennett, I do like dictionaries. Was was someone saying I don't like dictionaries? I like dictionaries. They're useful. I also like uh, I like queues. I like stacks. I like all the various uh, structures. So that one's seventy five. Right. Yeah. And and sixty five for the last one, and we should be good. So let's try one in the tests. And everything's green. Woohoo! Cool. Uh, any anything you you want to refactor? Looking over this code. Let me anchor to you. So. Okay. Um, didn't you remove that? I thought you removed that total. Oh, I did. Do you, do you see it? Yep, yeah. Okay. I see it. Yeah. Yep. 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 No. I, so I think what happened is I think some of our changes got undone at one point. So I think okay. that's what happened. I think uh, we must have had like some kind of a control Z or something like that. I assume it is. Um, live share that got us on that uh, because something about like the way it's transferring the stuff between them I assume we hit a live share bug okay uh, any other refactoring I don't know I mean it works <laughs> uh, it does is, is there any duplication you don't like maybe over here anything I don't I don't know I don't see anything right now yeah no there's nothing jumping out but again okay. I, I'm if there is something that I should be saying and I'm not no, I'm. Somebody. I was just wondering if you if you saw anything I didn't. So uh -oh. sounds like we're good. Yep. Cool. Um. So sounds like you get to give me the really, 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 really difficult test, and it legitimately is the the first difficult one we get. So we're talking about multiple copies of. Yeah. So basically, it's going to be the the multiple copies of of the same book combined with uh, whoops I didn't right. anchor you so, no I am what do we want to call that um, this is oh. going to be the case where, where we have uh, duplicates of the same book so there is no discount but then we also have other books that are unique yep so maybe a so, book one a book one and a book two yep so what do you want to call this one Uh, don't worry about the name for now. Just say like "do stuff given something" and then write the test, and then we'll we'll figure out the name in a moment. <laughs> okay. Given, given books. We'll do that. Okay. And yeah, so... that, that's one of my secrets to writing tests is sometimes just do the test. Figure out the name once you see what it does. <laughs> Even if you know what you're gonna do with it, like naming is hard. All right, so we're going to get back to this. Yep, yep, that sounds thing. great. And we'll keep it that simple. Uh, new book, new book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Duh, jeez. Yep, it's happening. It's I didn't happening. realize what it was at first either. Huh. One. Ah, oh, you got it. Cool. Yep. And new book three. All right, that looks good. Uh, let me steal these two lines for you. Put them at the bottom. Oops. Hey, look at that. JJJ. Uh, so that is... Why don't you do this? Uh, make this... Let's do the... Let's do what we did before, right? And this is 0 0.95M. And then, can we just do plus 8? Right? Order of yep. operation should add that 8 on at the end. Yep. 
And I think that's an obvious order of operations trick there. <clears throat> uh, Striker, I will take a look at that. I, I was not 100% sure whether or not we could get rid of that or not. You mentioned it earlier, and, I, and I, my immediate thought was, yeah, you're totally right, we can pull that out. Uh, but then what I wasn't confident is, is when we do the distinct on that value, um, I wasn't sure if that's doing a selection for the sake of doing a distinction on the objects, or whether that is um, doing a, uh, actually returning back the value itself, and that's what I wasn't sure about. I can't remember uh, how that, I, I think distinct works the other way. Uh, so do stuff given books. We expected to get 23.2, and in, that sounds right, because the point two was the two-book discount one, where we got 80, 80 cents off, basically. And on this one, uh, we are getting a little bit less, so that means we're applying the discount to the book. So that seems right. <clears throat> and by right, I mean I think it's failing. Uh, okay, so I am I will check that thing that Stryker is suggesting. And we'll see if he's right. So he was suggesting that uh, we can take this, I don't know if you're anchored to me, put it inside of the distinct and not have the select. Oh, because we're not adding based on that, I think we can. Be... Don't think that's working. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the biddies, Hourhawk. Okay, um, well, either way, the test is definitely failing, so you got me a failing test. Let's get it a name. Uh, so, do stuff given books. Um, what is this? Uh, maybe, um, apply discount only to appropriate subset of books? Hey, so Real quick, on line 33 that we misnamed that last test. I don't know if I did it or if oh. it was a weird... Give number discount given that said, one that, of each that book. It feels weird now that I'm looking at it. Okay, I don't yeah. want to distract from what we're doing, but just we need to come back to that. Yeah, yeah. Let's get this name and then we'll get that name too. Uh, so this one is... Um, uh, apply discount only... Uh, Apply discount only to set uh, given duplicate uh, book. Apply discount only to uh, unique unique book uh, books given duplicate book. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. Uh, actually, we're going to say it should require, uh, should should return uh, price dis, uh, I'll say price discount only to unique books given duplicate book. Okay. I think, th I think that finally is a name that makes sense. That one's good for you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Uh, give numbered discount given one of each book. Uh, so number discount, you're right, doesn't make all that much sense. Um, give, uh, should return, uh, maybe matching discount? Should return matching discount given one of each book. Yeah, I keep thinking like uh, proper discount or that, that's the word that keeps coming to me is like. Yeah, I love it. That works. That, so for anyone who doesn't know, one of the big reasons uh, why pair programming is so valuable is if I had named that the one that I liked, and then Mike comes along later, he reads it and he doesn't quite get it, like it's not just like an immediate like, yeah, I know what that means, then, you know, that is like not as good as the code could have been. But because he was right here, he pointed that out right away and he was like, hey, yeah, I don't really get that name. Like, let's let's get that fixed. So that's what I love about it. So awesome, awesome suggestion, Like, 
Uh, let's run these again. So we're gonna I'm gonna run all the tests real fast, and we'll see what we get. Uh, fuel Snable, I love mob programming. It's very useful, uh, but you need to do it sparingly because it is very expensive to pull uh, a large number of developers in on one coding task. Uh, but if it really is like a core central piece that everyone's going to have to interface with, it's really useful to mob program it. Uh, okay. Uh, Gee, Sutherland, that's, so the, the theory of fact is X unit. Uh, those are just the attributes X unit uses uh, instead of what is the test and test case for like an end unit? Yep. Uh, So when I do go to oops, price calculator, uh, I don't know if I just borked everything for you. Tell me if I did. Um, so let's take a look at this. So we applied the discount regardless. So now is when we have to come up with some way of figuring out sets of books or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's so many ways we could do this. Um, so we can either start tracking book sets as like a whole concept where there is a book set, uh, or we could just start storing, so we could switch over to a dictionary style approach where we maybe keep track of the count of the number of books that were in that set, um, something like that. I'm leaning towards doing the book set right now though. Mm -hmm. You think that, you, you, you good with that approach? Yeah, I, I am, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So well, our, our Hawk, to answer your question, uh, just having other, other developers working on your project ever bother you in the sense that you don't understand something as well, no. Um, like, I, I would much rather have someone there watching what I'm doing and providing suggestions because I think it'll be overall better code than if it's just me in a vacuum. Always. It's always good to have other developers working with you. I agree completely. Uh, book set is a... Yeah, and so, so, so continue on that. So the other thing, too, is, but there's not times that I don't want to just write code myself, right? There is always that. I just want to kind of go off and just do it and then bring it to someone. So there are those times as well. Um, but I, I really prefer having that second set of eyes. I worked on a project a couple of years ago that that when I, it ended up being a critical piece of infrastructure and uh, so I had that was the most well-reviewed piece of code I'd ever written. Uh, I wrote it and then I paired on it uh, a lot with a, a friend of mine, and then um, had the whole team review it after that. So still makes me nervous having some of that code. It's weird. I, like I wish I could capture more of what I'm seeing, uh, Brendan, for this live share because I'd love to report some of these bugs. Um, I may try to snag some screenshots. Uh, this is all being recorded, you know. Well, not my end of it, though, right? Not not what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is a good good idea. We should probably do that so that we can let them know about them. Uh, okay, so I just moved get discount into our book set class, um, which means I now need to create book sets. Uh, so if I want to go the easy route, I could just make this a single book set and then it still doesn't deal with uniqueness or anything like that, but um, I can now say, like, you know, book set dot get discount. Uh, wait, what? Isn't that public? No, I made it private. Well, that was dumb. <laughs> Whenever you do that stuff, you're like, whoops, that was foolish of me. Okay, um, okay, cool. That looks like it'll work. Uh, fact equals test and test case. Uh, yeah, Striker, that's right. Uh, you're working on a pure coding platform, a web, and your streams are based on. You started working on it yesterday. You got the idea from the computer science class where we were pure coding. Uh, but there wasn't any good web applications to do so. They do exist. They do just poorly execute tasks. What do you think about that? Um, if you're talking about something like this, our hawk, uh, VS Live Share is actually a very good uh, tool for doing this kind of programming. Uh, 
book set would mean you get the opportunity to apply logic to that class rather than limiting it to the operations on a dictionary within the book class. Uh, yes, exactly. Yep, we can actually put some stuff in there. Uh, let me run these tests real fast. And we'll see what we end up with. So, okay, so all the other tests still pass. So I've switched us from using a list of books to a book set, um, which is not really what we want, uh, but that's a refactoring step that we needed to make as we do one extra jump here. Um, we now need to make essentially a list of book sets. Uh, and actually, I just realized we probably don't want to make the book set a, um, a list itself. I started it as a list because that gets me a nice add method, right? So I inherited from list, that gets me add, and I could add books. Uh, so, list book sets. So that's a new list of book sets. We need a, um, ooh, I might need to override add. Uh, actually, list of book set, add book. We're gonna say, um, if books question mark dot um, <laughs> ooh how do we want to do this so here's let me let me uh, let me make a method out of it and then we can just think of how the method works so uh, let's think through this so we want to say if uh, if new book set needed so we'll say is if is new book set needed then we'll create a new book set so uh, and let's actually say for book and this will be book set uh, so set to apply um, set to add to Here's what I'm thinking. So if we do this, if we need a new one, then we say set to add to equals new book set and underscore books dot add set to add to, right? So we're saying if we needed a new one, then get one and add it in. Otherwise, um, get the appropriate one. else um, get book set we'll say set to add to equals get um, best book set and then we'll say add the book to that book set so then that gives us those that we need to do. Why does, what the, oh, wait, list of book sets, that's, uh, oh, because we need to calculate the price for each book set, that's why. Uh, so that's, yeah. We're going to do it the simple way. Decimal sum equals zero. Uh, hang on. Uh, what is going on in chat? Whole bunch of stuff. A list of lists. Uh, that's odd. My cheers weren't processing for a second. Uh, list of dictionary makes it look like uh, wait, list of list of dictionary of list. Yes, exactly. Four million character type space. <laughs> okay. Uh, hang on one second. For each underscore books, this is book set. For each book set, sum plus equals the price of that book set. Right? So book set. I almost want to do a calc price on the book set instead of just uh, all the books together. So that's calculating the price on the book set, which is going to be this. 
return sum. And if we go to calc price, we can return that. And instead of books, it's this dot select. And then we can just say get discount. At which point this becomes private again. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, I wanted to make sure I didn't do anything totally crazy here. <laughs> so we're no, no longer doing... Uh, it, it took me a minute to figure out where you were going, but... Yeah, sorry about that. It That's took me good. a minute to figure out where I was going. This was the leap. That was why at one point I was like... You know, like you'll, you'll notice each of us has had like that, that like, oh, dang it, I have to make a leap point in this code. This was just one of the bigger leaps in this problem. Because uh, we need this now. Is new book set needed? So we'll see if... Uh, so this is return... So we need a new book set if all of the ones that we have... Uh, if, if Either if, if we have no book sets... Uh, so let's do this. Um, if books... Whoops. Helps if you start with parens there, Brendan. Uh, if books... If uh, books any, right? If there aren't any books, if there aren't any book sets already, we need one. Return true, right? If, if it's empty, we need to return true. Um, otherwise, we need to return uh, if all of them already contain this book. So we'll say set set dot contains uh, set has any book where the book number equals book dot book number. So return any of that or or any of that. That looks good. Okay, awesome. Uh, <laughs> you injured your shoulder while programming. Uh, no, while working out. Okay. <laughs> that made no sense for the way I read it at first. Uh, let me just make a dictionary where the key is the class from a complex hierarchy. No, Striker, we're not going to do that. Uh, got into programming for real when I was 14. Never looked back. Fuel Snable. Yeah, I think that's pretty similar to a lot of us. Uh, and uh, Hourhawk, thank you for all the biddies. How do you recommend learning Angular alongside Core MVC? Um, write a sample app. Literally, literally the best suggestion I can give you. Do do some coding in it. It's more do you recommend learning them both at the same time? Oh, oh, uh, do I recommend learning them both? Uh, you can, absolutely. Um, because if you're going to do any Angular, you're going to need to have some kind of data access for it because no <clears throat> website you're going to make uh, that's front-end that has any value at all is going to have no back-end data. Like, there, it's going to have some kind of back-end data. Uh, so what I would do is I would focus on one, so learn the basics of the other. So, for example, if you want to learn Angular, learn Angular and just learn the simple bits enough to get your web API, for example, uh, in ASP.NET. And I would actually recommend you learn ASP.NET Core if you're going to look at that. ASP.NET Core is absolutely the way to go. Okay, so we got that one. And then this is Get Best Book Set. Um which for now we're gonna go with the naive approach. Remember how the one example that we have to be able to support uh, where it's better to go another way? I'm not gonna do that yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and say underscore books order by uh, descending the set.count so I'm going to order them descending by the count, uh, and we're going to take the first one that, uh, so since we already got to this point, we know there's one that's available to us. So I'm going to say first instead of first or default, um, and this will be the first set uh, which Uh, there aren't any uh, 
And I'm actually going to do this just to make it a little bit clearer. So we're going to say books, order by descending, grab the first one where the book dot number aren't anywhere the book number equals our book. Whoops, I need to pass through the book. There we go. And it wants to switch that to all. That's fine. So we're going to return back the first one where that is the case. So that's not bad. Uh, CMCA boy, uh, please advise how to get a job. I actually have a... Uh, there is actually a previous stream of Dev Chatter where we talked about that. Um, so uh, take a look at our history. Look at our pair of programming ones. Look for one with Cassandra Ferris as the guest. And we did talk about that. Uh, okay. Hey, Retro Bear, uh, since you're doing pair of programming, is there a reason you don't let the navigator do more of the out loud thinking? Uh, he's got a better handle on where he's going with us than I do right now. <laughs> so I think that's why. Yeah, so uh, Retro Bear, the short answer is... Um, Yes, there is something to be said for Navigator, uh, you know, driving the developer, but I'm never too worried about the exact thing on that. I like, however your pair is working, keep keep doing it. If your pair works well one way, great. The only time it's a bad scenario is if, um, if I were writing a bunch of code and Mike's sitting there going, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, so if I say everything I'm doing and Mike says, like, you know, chimes in at any point uh, and says, like, hey, I do this other thing, I'm going to do that other thing. And uh, if he says, hey, I didn't get that, I can adjust that. But yeah, um, so what RetroBear is talking about is there's a style that's called, uh, like, where there's a navigator and a driver, and the driver basically doesn't think at a, other than, like, the specific code they're doing. Uh, in this case, um, we're, we're just sort of passing back and forth, so... Uh, but that seems to work, I think. I'm anchored to Mike. I'm like, why does it keep scrolling me? Does this uh, do anything? Oh, it was just trying to, like, every time I scrolled away from your cursor, it pulled me back in. Okay, uh, I need to give you a failing test. Price discount only to unique books given to... Uh, here, let's do this. Um, yeah, I don't see what you're doing now, and I since I'm anchored to you. so Oh, there we go. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, so we should be down here. I'm making a new test, and um, I'm actually just going to say, again, I'm just going to do something, do something given something, because I want to figure out what test we want to make. So I think... Um, what would be an interesting test is um, one where uh, we get, say, the 90% discount, so the three-book discount, um, but maybe we get it, uh, say, three times or something like that. So that's kind of like this one. Uh, so that's, that's kind of like the opposite of this, where we wanted it to not apply the same discount every time. And this one would be like, let's apply the same discount every time. So let's do this. I'm going to do a quick little for loop just to give us, uh, whoops, I and three. And each time we're going to add in books one, two, and three. So that's a unique set each time, and we're going to do it three times. So there should be nine total books. So, nine total books, and the discount we expect applied is that one. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I will hand this off to you. Uh, as soon as I give it a name. Do you want to help me with that name? Mm. What are we doing here? This is uh, apply discounts on multiple sets. Mm-hmm. Feel free to jump in with a name with with like that's yeah, what right. we're doing, but yeah. so it should return. Um, uh, how about how about this discounted price uh, for sets uh, given 
multiple uh, identical sets. Discounted price for sets given multiple identical sets. Hmm. All right, let me just make sure I understand everything you did. So, yeah. funny. Uh, I heard the audio in the audio output. I thought I had those muted. So, Fuel Snable, do you have a suggestion for a name? Price discount only to... Uh, Hold on, did I just lose that test again? What test? That's not the one. You, that's not the one you just wrote, is it? This test right here. Price discount only to unique books given duplicate book. No, that's the old one. Okay. Oh, the then. name just reset. Oh no no yeah. no it didn't no it didn't. I see I see three total tests. How many tests do we have? Four. Four. You okay. See this so, one? No, the fourth one is not showing up for me. Reload the file. Your your cursor's on it. Right now. Okay, that, that's weird. Okay. So I, I, I clicked back to anchor on you, and it showed up. Okay, cool. Weird. Uh, yeah, we should definitely contact the uh, live share team about that. Uh, so thank a lot. Hey, welcome. It's going going well. Uh, Brave Cobra, no, I don't usually have background music while uh, we're pairing. Um, I could turn it on if you guys want the background music going, though. Uh, the challenge with that is got to crank that background music down way low, then. Okay, so discounted price for sets. So did anyone in chat have a better uh, suggestion? Okay, just complaining. <laughs> Perhaps n the name should list what discounts are expected to be applied. Uh, we could potentially do that. Uh, let's do this. Hang on. Yeah. No, no, no. We're, we're going to... We'll, we'll get Fuel Snable covered. Um, here. Let's change it to a theory with inline data. Do you, do you want to get this one? Here, get uh, get this one. Uh, so set it up with like, um, to handle the, the three and the 90% and the discount or something as the two inputs. Okay, so. Yeah, so like three and then uh, 0 0.9 for the, the inputs uh -huh. here, right? Because uh, then we can we can say like, uh, we could do three sets of, of four books or something like that, right? So right now we set it up as um, we set it up as a single for loop, but it could absolutely be a nested for loop, which sounds hilarious to do, but no, it actually makes sense here. Um, <laughs> and uh, Kale for Twitch, good evening, welcome. Is that what we want to do? Uh, so the, the first one is the count, and then the second arg is the discount. Yeah, discount we want applied there. Yep, that was that's where we want discount applied. Uh, and then for count, um, we need another for loop. So it's in it nest a for loop inside that one, and do book number. So instead of book one through three, uh, do like yeah an int j or something. X works. <laughs> Just not I again. Right. Uh, so less than count. Uh, and actually, let's do less than or equal to count and start it at one. Other side. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And uh, then we should be good. And then instead of book one through three, let's change that to use X as the parameter, and then we're good. No, nope, just one book now. Oh. Yep, there we go. So now we've made three of them, and so the reason I, I would say to do the for loop instead of like hard coding three of them inside of the for each loop is the idea that um, it 
Uh, we could then adjust the test to have a different number, right? If we wanted. Uh, so what is this going to do? This is going to give us three sets of books one through three, and it's going to apply a discount on everything. Oh, uh, this. Hang on. I just noticed. That needs to be three times count times discount, right? Because three is right here, uh, which actually let's do this just to make this clearer. Let me extract that variable. Um, set count. And maybe change this to book count. To clarify. Does that make sense? Yes. So then we have... Uh, we clarified that price, and I think that's right. Now this might work. Uh, I'm gonna have to read what's going on in chat here in a sec. Sounds like there's some good suggestions. I'm gonna run the test. We'll see what what happens with this. I actually have no idea what's gonna happen. It should pass, but it, and it did. Cool. All right. Sweet. It's green. Uh. Okay. Um. In addition, the test case should perhaps not just the price, but also check what discounts have been applied. Uh. Yeah, we could do that because the price can be correct by chance. It is. Really, that the correct discount has been applied that should be tested. Uh, fuel Snable, not technically true. Um, it does not, so as far as the customer is concerned, it doesn't matter what discount was applied as long as we gave them the cheapest price. Uh, so it did actually say that in our instructions in the kata, we just needed to give them the best deal. So as long as we gave them the best deal, even if we got them the best deal uh, in some alternate way, that's totally fine. Um, when live share not where yeah exactly Janiscu live share was giving us some kind of trouble, um, uh, so count price could return an expression tree that preserves what discounts are applied and in what order. Oh yeah 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 we could do that yes yes we could, um, and yes you guys are right. Uh, if we wanted to have nice invoicing that is absolutely the way we'd need to do it we would want calc price to actually show that. <laughs> Fuel Snabel didn't read the cattle. All right. Um, so that test passes. So, uh, Mike, we're almost done. Yeah. Remove method parameter fix. Sweet. I don't know what that was, but something failed somewhere. Uh, some guy on the web. Uh, welcome. Hi. Yes, this is a C-sharp stream here. Uh, I'm going to steal from Steve's uh, site here, although it's funny to say it's Steve's. What did we do? One through... Okay. Um, oh, actually, because we can, let me do this. Four, five, and that should be eight, five, and seven, five as the discounts there. Because uh, we had test cases, so why not? Okay, and they're all green as well. Let's do the let's do the fun one. So we'll just hard code this one. Public void. Um, this will fail. There's a great name for the test. Uh, what do we need? We need to check price at the end. And we need a price calculator that we're going to add books to. Add new book. The one. So we're going to say two, three, uh, two, two, three, three, four, five, five, and one copy of six. So there we go. Hard coded. We'll figure out a nice way to write that in a second. Um, what is this? Two sets of five with six distinct books. Exactly. 
is better. Yep, 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 yep. Brave Cobra has it exactly. That is that is what we want to test here. Uh, yeah, this will totally fail for a number of reasons. Uh, so this is supposed to be. So we're saying two sets of five, right? So that is um, eight times five books times, and five is the 75% discount? Yep, so that's the 70, the, you pay 75%. And then times two, right? We wanna do this calculation twice. That sounds right to me. And when we do this, it is probably going to fail. And we can figure out that name. Uh, Cap Niner, hi, welcome. Alright, cool, it failed. <laughs> so... Thoughts on this one? Yeah, I gotta remember to... <clears throat> click my mute button when I want to talk. Yeah, helps. <clears throat> uh, thoughts on this one? Hmm. <laughs> and I'm actually going to probably leave it as this will fail for now. Because right. I think the name is funny. Okay, so let's let's see what the problem is. So we don't have the itemized discounts, which the suggestion from Fuel, Fuel Snable is a really good point. Having an itemized list of which discounts were applied would make this make sense. But basically, it looks like we charged the customer an extra 80 cents that we should not have charged them. And that boils down to the mathematical difference of uh, what we charged them. Instead of 8 times 5 times 0 0.75 times 2, so that's uh, two sets of 5, right? That set and this set. We charge them for a set of six and a set of four. So we charge them uh, six times that, and then it was plus uh, 8m times 4m times, what's the discount for four? 85%. So we charge them this in this one instead of that one. So if I run this, we're we're gonna fail on line 102. So uh, wait, failed on line 101. Oh man, I didn't even math it right. Apparently, eight times six times. Seven, oh, not seven five, seventy, because we did six. Ah, oh, math it right, Brendan. Math it right. Um, this test is hard to make pass. There you go. Are you happy now, S and B? We we made the. We still got across the point that this test is hard. <laughs> So, so there we go. Now we're failing in line 102, which means that we've confirmed that this uh, line passes. So that is indeed the calculation it did, and we want it to do the one below it. Uh, so what do, what do you think for this one? Uh, we could... Okay, so... Um, what do we need to do? What is where's the where's our problem? What do we need to work on to make this work? Got a good uh, got a good idea on what we can change? I don't. I I ha I I know where to change it. I've done this kata. Okay. I, I I know one spot we can change, uh, and it's 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 a tough one. Uh, this is actually one of like this. You remember how I talked about how this kata has like a few like three big leaps 
The, the thing that makes this kata actually really difficult is the leaps are increasingly difficult. So the first leap is pretty easy, switching from like the, the total to like, oh, I have to actually start tracking all the data, right? That's the first leap that we made. The second leap that we made was the one where we started keeping track of sets of books, right? And there's a lot of ways we could have done that. But I, I think what we did was not bad. This last one here is a big jump. Because this is, we, we have to start figuring out how to decide which discounts to apply, right? So the challenge is really which book set we need to put it in. So, um, and we come down to the question of do we start brute forcing or do we um, essentially resign ourselves to the fact that sometimes you need to code to the solution that you're building, like code to your domain, rather than just um, uh, you need to code to the domain instead of um, well, so, sorry, sometimes you actually do need to hard code in something specific to your business logic. Because um, this method right here, this get best book set, this is where I feel like we need to change. And I think we want to optimize. So, so uh, Mike, question for you. What is What do you notice about these discounts that we have here? What's What's weird about these discounts that we have? Uh, Fuel Snable, I'll send a link. What's weird about the discounts we have? Yeah, there's something that I, I actually happen to already know about because uh, I have done I, I have done this kata once before. There is a thing that so why is it that uh, it's so much better to have two sets of five instead of a set of six and a set of four? It's because of the way the discount is calculated. At, 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 so it's it goes from... Well, that's, that was, I, I, like when we first started, I saw the percentages, right? There's there's something about them that, that I, I remember I said early on, I thought we, there was something we could do with them. Yes. Um, I can't quite put my finger on what you're getting at. I mean, I, I, I see it. I can't verbalize so it. So each one is 5% between them. So like going right. from 2 to 3 is, is a 5% increase. But specifically right. going from 4 to 5 is a 10% discount, basically. Right. So that means we want to optimize for 5 being our, <clears throat> our ideal number, right? So whenever, whenever given the chance to increase a 4 to a 5, we need to do it. Like 100%. Every single time, right? Yep. We, we could put that in there. Now, we, we now have the option. We could either hard code in that 5 is the important one, and I would recommend we do that to start with. Um, or you could you know have the list of discounts be somewhere in the system and be calculating what the difference is, right? And be saying, like, which, which single book increase to a set gets us the best discount? Like, which, which one's adding to gets us the best? And that's the ideal, like, long-term solution. But I don't know if we'll do that. Uh, so, do you want to try to pick a book set, then? So, we're ordered descending by count. So, right now, I have us picking the largest book set. So, we get the we add the book to whichever list has the most books in it already. And if you and if you don't uh, uh, if you don't want to jump on this one, I can make I, I can do this one. What do you, what do you want to yeah. do? Yeah, I, look, I'm I'm happy to sit back and observe here. Okay, um, I'll do it. I'm, so I'm looking at the chat too, where uh, as a brave cobra said, make all the sets as big as possible instead of one set as big as possible. Yeah, that's sort of what we're doing, except we're optimizing for very specific ones too. Uh, let's rename that to book sets. So, get best book set. Uh, yes, optimize where the increase is the biggest. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Brave Cobra hit, hit precisely what we want to do. Uh, so, that means we want to... So, we ordered by uh, count, uh, but we actually want to grab... Um, 
So instead of saying first, let's do this. Let's say where, and then apply first at the end. Because now we just have to get them in order. So let's call this um, applicable sets. So this is going to be all the sets that that where where it could be applied, and we'll order after that as well. So book sets where the book can be added. So clearly we never want to start a new set, right? That would be the worst idea because that would be adding a book that gets no discount, and that never makes sense. So if we can apply it to a list, we want to. So we're going to grab the ones where it doesn't have the book. Um, oh, let's let's say instead of applicable set, let's say needs book, uh, needs this book. So this is all the all the sets that need uh, sets needing book. Sets needing book. Order by descending. Get the set with the high, with the highest count, and then pull that one first. Um, Instead of ordering by the set count, let's order by the discount increase, maybe? So let's call it that. So does discount increase make sense? Yeah. So we'll make a property called discount increase. And it'll be a decimal also. There we go. Feel free to jump in at any point. Uh, so, get discount. Um, uh, how do we... Hang on. Get discounts always private, right? Get discount. Uh, by. We'll make it discount. No. Um. Hmm. How do we do this? I. So I want to be able to call this and get the theoretical new discount. So the discount increase is, um, uh, I want to do this, return get discount uh, minus get discount, where the first one is, is an increased discount, right? So this is like this dot count plus one, and this is, you know, this dot count. Oh, you know what? Actually, so the thing I was trying to preserve is this. So we did get discount. We don't need to distinct anymore because we're keeping them distinct. The book set only has them this way. So we just need this dot count. And we can pass that in. Int count will make it static. There we go. And now we can just say this dot count. So then we can say count and count plus one. And we can make that an expression bodied member. So now we can sort based on the discount increase. Uh, hang on, let me read what's in chat. Uh, add to the set that would give you the biggest ink. Yeah, uh, no, I think it's right, Brave Cobra. I think that's right. Order by the one with the best discount increase. Maybe we want to first order, hang on, we want to order by count first. Order by descending set, set.count. 
I think we want to order by both, actually. Why is that yelling at me? Oh, then by, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Uh, order by... Oh, I have them flipped then, don't I? Let's try this. Let's run this code, let's see what it does. So, order by discount increase, then by count. So, it'll put it in the largest one, or the one that gets you the best increase. Why do we have a test just called B? Looks like we grabbed the same one. In that case, we'll try it this way. Maybe it was... Uh, maybe it was that ordering. Really? Hang on. Oh, derp. Now let's make sure that's gone. Or let's make sure this is failing for the right reason check. Expected 60, actual 60, 80. It's not what I want. Get the best book set is grab all the ones that are available and then order by the count and then by the discount. Let me remove this for now. We're gonna sort just by the increase. This might make other tests fail. Yeah, still failing. All right, we're gonna wanna, I'm gonna debug this. Let's find out what the heck is going wrong. Debug. SQL Server there, thank you. Uh, let's jump through a few lines here. Take a look at the price calculator. And actually, let's jump down to get the best book set. Did we not call that? Hang on. I never got to that code. Set to add to. Debug this, please. There we go. Okay. So this is trying to add book number two, and that should be a single book in here, right? Yep, that's a single one that it's going to add. Then we're going to try to add another, uh, we're going to try to add a book number three, and another book number three. How many sets do we have? We have two sets right now, one with three books and one with one book. That's a book number two. Three, a two, and a one. Now we have a two, a three. That makes sense. How many book sets do we have now? We have a four and a three. Now we don't want that to get past five. We have two fours now, so now we want to make fives. So that makes a book five. One, two, three, four, and a five. That makes sense. And what's the other one have? It has a two. 
should be a three, four, and a five. And in this one, this is the one we actually want to look at. Let's see what it does. Uh, I think this should return both. Okay, so it returned back both. And then we want to sort by this value. So let's jump into the switch statement. And when we're in here, we want to do it for count six. It should turn back seven minus that. So that should return back five. Now we come in here again and we get 75 minus 85. Oh, son of a gun. I did it backwards. Did it backwards. That's why we sorted reversed. That's not the discount increase this way. That's uh... It's minus that because the larger number is closer to one. So now it should sort right. Derp. Derp. I derped that one. <laughs> All right, there we go. Did you like that dirt, Mike? I did. I thought that was I pretty did. good. I noticed chat's gotten kind of quiet too, so I wonder if everyone was like watching as intently as I was. Because yeah. Of... <laughs> there we go. Yeah, like I'm debugging through that. I'm like, something is going wrong. This should work. Like this made sense in my head. Cool. All right. Awesome. Uh, we <clears throat> now we now do this. Uh, the funny part is we, we even could come up with some way of pulling out these discounts using these in the tests. Like if we actually pulled out discounts as a concept, if we like, you know, instead of having it on our book set, made it a static class somewhere that you could pull these from, um, which in theory, then you could think of that as like pulling them out of a database or something like that. Um, uh, Brave Cobra, uh, in that case, um, if we were in that situation, then what I would want to do is I would want to do the then by that I did before. So, um, remember how I said then by count? At which point it's probably better to err on the side of doing the larger ones. Uh, but what I'd actually recommend if your, uh, if your model gets difficult, the answer for that, and, and this probably is the next step, uh, Brave Cobra that we want to do, is, um, you want to start almost brute forcing it and kind of just being like, is like, which one of these is it cheaper to add it to kind of thing. So like add a bunch in and then start seeing like, is it cheaper to, you know, add this, like which one is it the cheapest to add the, the book to? Um, because there are some weird scenarios. Um. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Chavez, 34. Um, <laughs> I always miss some mundane detail. That's not some mundane detail, Michael. Yeah, always miss a decimal point or something like that. But that's why we unit tested. So we, we got that. Uh, cool. Uh, anything about this code that, that uh, you want to refactor? Any duplication that we want to get rid of here that, that you see anywhere, Mike? Or anybody watching either? Yeah. No, I... It looks okay um i gotta click around a little bit i will anchor to you then anchored yeah i guess the one thing that gets me a, almost a, a little bit is our um is our price calculations that we do which kind of kind of work um I like that we did them as calculations. I, I just wish there were some better way of, of uh, getting names on them. So. I almost want C Sharp to let me put in a pointless name that's totally unused. Like, don't make me declare a variable. Just, like, let me put a name next to a variable. N next to a literal, I should say. Oh, yeah, I, don't yeah. do, I, I don't I don't do enough of these kind of I, I need to do more because there's like <clears throat> I 
it, it's interesting to have watched you, and I will say watched you because I didn't participate a whole lot, uh, because I just, I don't know, doing these types of problems, I, I, I tend to like sit back and kind of stare at the screen to figure stuff out. So to try to work through them the way you did mm -hmm. in this session was was weird for me because that's you know <laughs> I like I do I, I tend to kick back put my feet up stare at it curse a little bit right that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I'm um, glad you refrained from the cursing. 